Good morning. I'm Vu Nguyen from Sony Brook University. So I will talk about our paper, Shadow Detection with Conditional Generative Adversarial Networks. So what's the paper about? In this paper, we perform shadow detection using conditional GANs. But there is a problem. In most cases in an image, there will be much more uh, non-pixel shadows, non-shadow pixels than shadow pixels. As a result, the amount of non-shadow training data is much larger than the amount of shadow training data. Therefore, we need to balance these two classes during training the classifier. But, however, the process of tuning this balance is very painful because whenever you want to try a new balancing factor, you have to return, uh, you have to retrain the whole network again, which may take more than a day. So, in this paper, we propose an efficient method to train, to tune the balancing factor in which you just need to train once, but you we will be able to test with any balancing vector value during prediction time. So let's move on into, into details. As you all know, shadows are everywhere and they provide rich sources of information like object sets or uh, light source. So shadow detection is very important in computer vision. In particular, we want a system to take an input image and produce a corresponding shadow mask. A popular traditional approach consists of many small steps like segmentation, classify the segments into shadow or non-shadow regions, and using MRF or CIF to refine the results. But it has uh, several disadvantages, like it's not end-to-end -end training, and it does not incorporate the global contextual information. Even when you want to go with CRF to higher order potentials, it would be much more complicated. So in this paper, we use a single network to do shadow detection, in which, which is end-to-end -end training and also enforce the global contextual information. In particular, we use UNET which is trained using a different loss with the ground truth mask. Additionally, additionally, during training, we use a second network, the discriminator. This network takes two inputs, the RGB image and the shadow mask, either from the unit or from the ground truth. And this network will try to tell, the discriminator will try to tell whether the provided mask is the real one or the generated one. So, uh, this architecture is known as conditional GAN, which is a successfully applied on several different applications like image inventing or semantic segmentation. But when we apply it to shadow detection, it doesn't work really well. Why? Let's have a look at the different loss, which is the difference between the crowd root tree and the output O. This can be decomposed into the difference in the non in the shadow region and non shadow region. But the problem is if the non shadow region is much larger than the shadow region, the network would tend to produce almost non shadow pixels and still have a very small loss. A simple solution is to adjust the threshold during binarizing the generated mask to have more shadow. But it doesn't work because the mask is almost binarized already, as you can see on the histogram in the slide. Because otherwise, the discriminator will, would easily recognize the mask is the generated one. So it doesn't matter how you set the threshold, you still end up with this very similar results. So in order to deal with the imbalance, in this paper we use a sensitivity parameter W to control how much we are going to penalize a false positive prediction. So in this way, our model will incorporate the weight W like this. But the question is how to choose a good parameter. The ratio of positive pixels in the training set makes sense, but there is not guarantee that it is a good value for the parameter. In practice, what people usually do is to do research to, 
to find a good value for some single domain. But it's very expensive because, as I said, whenever you want to try with a new uh, parameter, you have to retrain the whole model again. Very expensive. So we propose an efficient method to learn the model with a family of parameter values in which we just need to train once only. But we will be able to predict with any parameter values during the testing time. In particular, the parameter w is not only injected into the loss function, but also injected into the generator as an input. And during training, the model will learn how to behave accordingly according to the provided parameter. And during testing, we can adjust the parameter to have bigger or smaller uh, shadow region as we desire. And we call this model the sensitivity, uh, sensitivity conditional GAN or SCGAN. In order to train the model in each iteration, first we sample the training data, and then we sample the parameter value from the uniform distribution from zero to one. Finally, we optimize the whole network uh, using the combination of the sample uh, training data and the parameter. We test our proposed method on two data sets, the USF and the SVU. And we evaluate it using the balance error, which is the average of the shadow error and the non-shadow error. So on the SVU data set, which is the largest public available data set for shadow detection, the state-of-the-art method stack CNN achieves the balance error of 11. Conditional GAN uh, without data loss performs worse. Meanwhile, our proposed SCGAN achieves the best result so far with the balance error of 9.1. Uh, and when we initialize our SCGAN with the semantic segmentation model, it helps to obtain even better results with uh, the balance error of 8.4. So let's look at some quantitative results with input image, stack CNN uh, results, the SCGAN is all. This is our, our method. And the ground truth. You can see that our, our produced masks are much better than the state of the art and very close to the ground truth. We also conduct experiments with different W to s observe the impact of the parameter W on the predicted shadow region. And as we expected, when W increases, the shadow error decreases. In the meantime, the non-shadow error in increases. And 0 0.7 is the minimum balancing ba error here. Uh, looking at some qualitative results with the input image, W equals to 0 0.3, 0 0.7, and 0 0.9. We can see that when W increases, we have larger and larger shadow region detected. Similarly, on UCF dataset, which is a smaller dataset with uh, around 100 training samples, we have similar results when our method achieves better performance comparing to the stack CNN when both models are trained on UCF training set and on SVU training set. And you can notice, even with our model trained on SVU training set, it is still a bit better than the uh, stack CNN trained on the UCF training set itself. So to conclude, we have proposed a SGAN model to detect shadows. Our, our method is able to address the problem of unbalanced uh, training set efficiently, in which we just need to train once, and we will be able to test with any balancing parameter during testing time. And actually, the proposed method can be applied uh, not only for shadow detection, but on some other um, other tasks like semantic segmentation where you have uh, still have the imbalanced uh, class problem on also. So thank you. Thank you. Any questions from the audience? I have a question myself. Yeah. 
Um, I'm always intrigued by shadows. So uh, what did your uh, framework learn? Um, does it have characteristics for the local appearance, like um, boundaries, or is more about the structure of the shadow? So what did it learn? Oh, so actually for the, so um, during training our model has, uh, because it's a conditional gun, it has two components. The generator will look at, will build up the single batch, build up the, uh, the batch of the shadows. So it will have the ability to look at the local regions. Meanwhile, because we have also have the discriminator to look at the generated uh, mass, so it also has the ability to, to look at the whole image to church. So it has both local and global churchmen on the shadow. And what is uh, more or less the, the balance between them? Oh, can you say again? You cannot say that? Sorry? Oh, can, can you repeat your question? Yeah, so in the Retinex, uh, you have a more or less the profile of the boundary of the, of the shadow to be used for uh, uh, detection. The, how do you balance between the global, the structure, the blob kind of form of the, of the shadow and the local appearance? Oh, so because the, uh, the, the uh, architecture of the, uni uh, of, the, of the generator is the unit, the, uh, this uh, network has a skip connection, which is still keep the, uh, the high resolution of the, uh, of the feature maps. So we still keep the, the boundary information during learning. Okay, thank you. There's another uh, question from the other room, please. Uh, maybe the microphone can be turned on. For Salah Darsena, can you turn the microphone on? Hi. Um, so it seems like shadow detection is kind of like a segmentation task where uh, cross entropy is traditionally used as a loss, uh, and like GAN loss has not been as good for semantic segmentation. So I was wondering what the motivation or intuition for using a GAN for this task is. Oh, thank you for your question. So actually, for sh yeah, you you can treat shadow detection as a semantic segmentation problem, but uh, the prob probability of the of, of the data is a little bit different where in shadow, you have to really uh, have the global information because uh, if you just look at the, uh, if you just look at the segment, the, some segment itself, in semantic segmentation, you can just, okay, that's the car uh, class or a person class, but uh, in shadow, you need to have the knowledge of how the overall image is in order to, to church, uh, that segment is a, a shadow. Because let's just imagine you look at to a patch or a, a region only without looking around. Uh, based on the in intensity, it's kind of hard to tell whether that is shadow or not. So we, we need the discriminator to incorporate the global information. Thank you.